In November of 2000, the Philippines authorized the creation of this new unit. Under General Order Number 1292, the Light Reaction Company was born. Alright y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out another big recommendation that I was getting from my fans over in the Philippines. So I appreciate you guys. We checked out the Philippine Scout Rangers. We checked out the Marsog. We checked out the Navsog. And now we're checking out the Philippines LRR, which is their Light Reaction Regiment. So I read a little bit about these guys on Wikipedia just to get a general understanding. But it seems like they're kind of like a, a counter-terror unit, but they're also like Army Special Forces. So some people have compared them to like uh, the Philippines, like Delta Force almost. So I guess we'll have to see. This video specifically is about the history of the LRR. So it should be good. It should give us a little bit of insight as to what these guys came from and what sort of operations they actually did. So again, I'm able to rock the Hawaiian shirts a little bit more now because the heat is now on in the barracks, which is really awesome. And then of course, I have the repelling elf on the shelf right here and then we also have our christmas lights so again i hope you guys can appreciate it christmas is coming up very very soon which is really exciting christmas is just a cool holiday cool music especially i love hearing christmas music all over the place some people get tired of it but i mean me growing up in like new york and new jersey i can't get enough of it so yeah i hope you guys are getting in the christmas spirit and hopefully this helps a little bit but let's get into this video it's about five and a half minutes long so not too long but should give us a little bit of background on these guys so let's do it it's a high it's a high speed introduction right there prior to the creation of the lrr the Republic of the Philippines maintained a small counter-terrorism unit called A-20, okay. which belonged to the 33rd Special Forces Company. In the year 2000, Islamist terrorist organizations in the Philippines were growing in strength. For sure. A series of high-profile kidnappings of American citizens captured Western attention. Now the United mm. States wanted to fight a problem that the armed forces Hell of the yeah. Philippines had been dealing with for decades. Hell yeah, it's a good team the right terrorist there. terrorist attack in 2000 led Ambassador Michael Sheehan, supported by Joe Felter, the Deputy Defense Attaché, to push for the Philippine Armed Forces to develop a more robust counter-terrorism capability. Okay. Yeah, so, I don't know, I've never seen any Special Forces unit specifically referred to as counter-terrorism. But again, when you're talking about the Philippines and what has happened in their recent history, yeah, counter-terrorism is going to be a big part mainly because it's, you know, you have the terrorism on their soil and in their country. Um, so it, it makes sense. You wouldn't really see a lot of like other countries who aren't really, who don't really have like the terrorist problem in their country developing a counter-terror uh, special operations force. So that's already pretty niche and it's very understandable. Again, with all the kidnappings and stuff, you need specific teams to do specific operations. But yeah, so far we've seen uh, like a wide range of like equipment. So yeah, we have like some nice helmets here, some normal helmets here, different weapons. Um, so like M4s, I saw an M14. We have these sniper rifles right here. So yeah, we're already seeing a bunch of different stuff. The night vision, I think I saw like a PBS-7. And I'm not sure what this specific night vision is, but yeah, so he's got the M14. So yeah, okay, interesting equipment so far. The United States prepared to deploy a mobile training team of Green Berets to the Philippines to train a new counter-terrorism unit. Ah, uh, okay. Hell yeah. In November of 2000, the Philippines authorized the creation of this new unit. Okay, so Under it's relatively General new. Order number 1292, the Light Reaction Company was born. Hell yeah. But still, they had to be trained and equipped. Bravo Company, 1st hmm. Battalion, 1st Special Force Group. Station at Okinawa, Japan, was given the task of training the LRC. All right, so that's a good working relationship. Many of the Green Berets were and graduates of the SFAR, the AEPC, and SOTIC, who were also regionally aligned with the Philippines. They were the perfect choice to mentor the new unit. All right, so that's awesome. I love seeing the working relationship between the United States and the Philippines. It's awesome just to have like, we see this now with the uh, the US Army's SVAB or the Security Force Assistance Brigades. You have people going out there and training these like militaries and these police forces and everything to make sure that they have the capability to defend themselves 
Um, and it's awesome. It's an awesome working relationship. It works for the U.S. because the U.S. doesn't have to send as many people to support if those people have the the right training and they have you know the good enough equipment to make sure that the, they can do it. So it's awesome. I love seeing that, especially the Green Berets going out and teaching them. If you're trying to get like a really solid special forces group, you know, built from the ground up, it's nice to have that input from the Green Berets, especially if they have gone through specialized training to assist in these specific operations. So that's it's cool. I love seeing that working relationship going on. Twenty-five million dollars were spent to support the unit. Okay. The unit sources its personnel from scout rangers and special forces and mm. then trains them along counter-terrorism lines, which was done by the U.S. There okay. were also some rivalries as the two <laughs> other army SOCOM units, the scout rangers and the special forces, eyeballed the new unit suspiciously. The <laughs> fact that LRC or the Light Reaction Company was getting the state-of-the-art weapons and equipment, mm. the LRC had all the good stuff. Hell Top yeah. of the line gear, whatever the B11 guys had, the LRB had. The That's Light funny. Reaction Company nearly had their first counter terrorism training force cut short. Hmm. As wow. the military wanted to deploy them immediately down south to Basila. The mission was to locate and rescue two American missionaries who had been kidnapped by the Abusia. Martin okay, so okay, so they're already getting operations like instantly. So yeah, that rivalry, I can understand that um, when you have like a new force coming up and all of a sudden they have like much better equipment than you. Yeah, you, of course you're gonna be you're gonna be like you know a little judgmental, but when you have people who are trained to use this specific equipment by you know like Green Berets and everything, it's going to work out just fine. And again, if they have that specialized training from those other people, then, you know, maybe they are a little bit more entitled to the equipment. I don't know. Again, it's going to come down to, you know, their their mission and what they actually need. But I can see why some people would be upset, especially if they're, you know, a new unit and they don't have the experience um, with the older equipment. I can understand that. But yeah, at least they're getting the right equipment they need for the job, especially counterterrorism. It's not an easy job. Burnham, we're taken from a resort. They were staying at while celebrating their 18th wedding anniversary. Okay. The LRC hit the ground and began their search, but suffered from command and control problems. It was an issue endemic among Philippine SOF units. Mm. And while deployed, they fell under the command of local area commanders. Okay, that makes sense. We usually do not have special operations <laughs> experience or know how to properly employ such units. The Light yeah. Reaction Company also deployed in their search alongside a company of scout rangers and a company of special forces, together creating the Counter-Terrorism Task Force. Hell yeah. U.S. Special Forces with advice. And okay, so a task force is an awesome way to do it. So when you have like this rivalry, it's nice to get the, the task force because then you have people working together. You can understand what each person's like mission or specific nuances are for that specific unit so working together would increase the understanding from unit to unit and again it will definitely help with the command and control because you need a certain you know you need people who are experienced one but you also need people who know how to employ special forces and if you don't have the right command and control then you're going to have the unit sort of misused and that's definitely not what they need especially when they have the right equipment to do the job they need the right command and control to make sure that they do it and try to help as best as they could it was just months after the 9-11 attack, it shook the world and the war on terror had begun. Mm. Rumor has it that some U.S. Special Forces members wore Philippine military uniforms and were on the front line to their host nation counterparts Hell yeah. at this time. There were also Philippine commanders who were assigned American Special Forces advisors. Okay, yeah, Those that makes sense. Those advisors had to go wherever their counterpart did. So if he was on the front, then so were they. Hell yeah. However, these American soldiers did not engage in a firefight. Mm. With LRC's initial deployment, other problems began to emerge. The LRC has to be a highly specialized unit. You can't keep them in the field for more than six months. You have to bring them back and retrain them. Okay, so yeah, that, that also makes sense. You see with like American Special Forces at least, I think like the Rangers are on like a three month deployment rotation. 
Um, and most special forces, from what I've seen, aren't more than like six month deployments. So you need to be able to go out there, operate, come back, retrain, and then also whatever lessons you learned on deployment, you can bring them back and sort of change your tactics, especially for a new unit like this. They're going to want to, you know, try and evolve their tactics as much as possible. So whenever they go, they go out there and get that experience for their counterterrorism operations, they need to take that experience, come back and sort of talk about it and see what they can do a little bit better. So it makes a lot of sense for them to make shorter rotations, especially when they're not that experienced with the actual operations. But the advisors definitely do help. And again, that's what you see now with the SVAB. Um, they're out there advising, not really getting too involved. They're just trying to make sure that they can be self-sufficient, that, that that specific unit in that country can be self-sufficient. The Philippine Armed Forces were learning the same lessons that the U.S. Army did when it stood up the Delta Force. Mm. A Squadron and B Squadron were initially created, but soon they realized that C Squadron was also required. Thus, it needed to become a battalion hmm. with three companies. Okay, getting a little bigger. Future, nice. We are now looking at training soldiers in an urban setting. To this day, the Light Reaction Battalion partakes on urban operations, particularly in the urban setting. Mm. Two of which were the Zamboanga Siege and the Marawi Siege. Yeah, that makes sense, especially what we've seen with Marawi. Marawi. They're going to need that CQB experience and that training. Hey, I like the camouflage. All right. Okay, so that was from the YouTube channel Phil Defense. Um, again, I'll put the original videos down in the video description if you guys want to go check it out. But uh, yeah, pretty good. I mean, I like the I like the history lesson and talking about how they're formed. Again, it is a pretty new unit, so they're probably going to be changing a lot, but uh, I'm not too sure what their selection looks like as opposed to what we've seen. Again, he was saying that they do get people from other special forces to go into this unit. So you have people who might have that experience already and who already have that discipline and physical fitness. So that'll help out for sure, but I'm not exactly sure what their selection process looks like. Um, if you can find any videos, if you all can find any cool videos about the LRR, specifically about their training or like follow on operations, I'd love to see it. I might not do a specific reaction to that, um, you know, additional video, but I'd love to check it out just to see what these guys do. But it's awesome. Again, it kind of sucks when you have units built out of necessity for certain things, especially like the problems they were having in Marawi. But you need people to be able to, to assist with that and make sure that that doesn't happen again. And like they said, they saw what was happening in Marawi and they realized they needed that close quarter battle training and that urban training. And it's a completely different beast. Again, most of what we've seen with the Philippines is they have a really solid expertise with tracking and just being in the forest, being in the jungle. Uh, but however, you are going to need those, you know, those urban skills, those urban operations experience just because if terrorism does come into your country, it's going to root itself in those cities and it's going to happen like that. So it's nice to have the capabilities to be able to respond to that. But yeah, these guys are cool. This is an um, awesome little history lesson, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you guys can find any more videos about these guys, I'd love to check it out. Um, I do love doing historical videos. I don't do them as much just because I'm trying to like see all these units and all these different countries and how they do certain things and how these units sort of compare. But whenever we get like a good overall knowledge of all these units, we can start going to the historical stuff a little bit more. But this was like a cool little history of the Philippines LRR. So yeah, I, I like it. I like the little change of pace. Hope you guys appreciated it. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments section. If you were in the LRR, let me know how that was, especially the selection, if you can talk about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it'd just be awesome to, to hear about it. I know I have a lot of fans over in the Philippines, so I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys appreciate this, uh, this little reaction video because I did get this recommendation a bunch, so I'm glad I was finally able to react to this one. But yeah, it was a good one. I'm excited. I want to check out more about the LRR. Keep sending those recommendations, especially for any other Philippine units. I'm down to check them out. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one, so we'll see you all in the next one.